India is one of the ancient civilizations in the world. The Indian culture has been preserved and practiced by its descendants, even inherited by the immigrants in Malaysia. As of today, we can still see the Indian cultural costume in the daily life. Nowadays, the traditional costume is not only for performance, but it becomes a choice for many of us to attend festive celebrations and formal occasions. Hi, Chanel here. Welcome to join us to understand the beauty and the culture of traditional wear sari. Hi, my name is BK Nair. I am the National Director for Miss Malaysia Sari and I'm also the Miss Malaysia Indian Tourism 2007. First time I put on my sari probably when I was three years old. It's not because somebody wanted to put the sari on me, maybe because I saw my mom, my grandmother, my auntie and all are always wrapping their sari and they look so good. So, you know, as a kid, like you just have that instinct, oh, I want to look pretty also like my, my mom. So I, I always take out all her saris and then try to tie it on me and put it on me but of course it's not like the correct method but I'll just be like messily draping it on me. Of course I love saris because I just love the beauty of it and uh, even now up to now I think I have like few hundreds of collections of sari. I got more saris than, I, than the dresses that I have actually. I remember my grandmother whenever she steps out of the house she only wears sari. So my mom wears sari when Whenever she goes to temple or there's only special occasion, maybe like uh, Dipawali and all that. Right now, currently, I also wear sari on a daily basis like for work but different kind of material sari. So, uh, I think nowadays there's no like special occasions that you need to wear sari. You can wear sari at any situation. It can be work, it can be uh, functions, it can be wedding, it can be festival. Because we have different different styles and different different materials like silk and then you have like cotton, you have linen and all that. So like that like there is a more comfort uh, kind of material. Like they have the cotton materials and all people wear on a daily basis for work as well. This is how I choose the saris uh, depending on the occasion. Let's say it's a very grand festival. Someone in my family is getting married. Of course, I will wear something more gaudy, expensive. Uh, we have this sari called Kanjipuram. Uh, so these are all like this high-end expensive saris. Uh, so like let's say I, I feel like I want to wear something comfortable uh, for my work. I'll wear a cotton material. Uh, so it is because it's more cooling and not too hot and you're going to wear it for long hours. So for me, I will choose the colours according to what I like, what I like to wear. But if let's say, uh, sometimes you need to choose certain specific colour. If let's say you are from the Malayali community, uh, wedding saris are usually either white or red. Right now, uh, we are having this festival called Navaratri. At these nine days, we actually have uh, specific colours that you can choose to wear these nine days. Uh, yellow, green, grey, orange, white, red, purple, pink and blue. Basically, there's nine colours because this is the colours of chakra. Spiritually, we all believe that our body is made of chakra, right? So, like each day we wear one, one colour because of the chakra colours actually to give us the energy. So, this nine day festival is supposed to give us like extra energy and power. Drapping sari, actually by right, I think you need some skill. I learned to tie sari because I was dancing. I know a lot of people actually go for uh, sari draping classes. You need to uh, uh, have a certain skill so that you get the shape, you get the pleats, you know, you get the correct uh, way of tying it. If not, sometimes it, it will come loose or it doesn't look good on you or it will become like, like it doesn't fit on your body. This is another cotton sari, it's like, comes with heavy zari. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to tie it on the mannequin. So to hold the sari, so we need to actually come up with a knot. Just tie it. Then you can actually put it like this. This is something just to hold the edge. Okay. And then you just tuck in here. 
and then go around the mannequin so here go to tuck into the skirts so this is the first step and then we bring again we turn again so now now we're going to do up the pallu so it depends whether you want a wider pallu or the smaller ones so this one i'm going to follow the border so this is how we formulate the pallu once i have completed putting the pallu then we just bring the border to actually show the waist and then just need to pull when i formulate the pleats so it's very well organized so now we're going to formulate the pleat so it's the same way how we were doing for pallu rearrange the pleats and got to tuck in here you bring down the middle of the waist and then you just need to tuck in so i've already wrapped the sari in the mannequin so this is how it's complete and can you see how beautiful it is from the 6 yard of sari so we have actually designed looking like a complete a uh, traditional wear into a sari form and i have matched it with a very traditional looking uh, accessory so this is a very this is called kasi mala so where a lot of brides they use this for wedding occasions and all that I've been always in love with sari. So many vibrant colors in sari. So I always love uh, colors. Since I have like a boutique uh, design here, so I cater for for that any particular person like youngsters. They like simple sari, simple colors with uh, nice blouse, you know, like this. Okay. And uh, older people they prefer like silk, which is a bit heavier. So I cater for them. and i also choose the nice accessories so they always come to me with a sari or accessories to match it actually we have got uh, uh, many types of accessories we have got gold plated which is expensive which you can keep for years so this is like a collection so i have got a lot of customers who have this collection they collect and they keep they 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 can use for many years you see and uh, i also have like uh, north indians we have got kundan sets and uh uh south indians like we we have this heavy accessory we call it temple sets so i've got malay customers uh who come for stone sets and chinese also very simple uh silver sets so i actually i cater for all races when i first see them i will ask them uh the the functions they are going for all right if it's a simple function then i give them simple accessories uh if let's say they going for a wedding and then i give them slightly heavy accessories okay heavy accessories are like this you know you cannot simply wear these outside for all occasions so you have got like special occasions when you can wear these uh but whereas like kundan light accessories you can wear for any functions designer pieces of course it looks like that so when you look at it you you can see the workmanship but you can't see the same thing when you buy the cheaper one it's just like mole you know you can't even like this is saraswati you cannot see this design if you buy the cheaper one it's like you know they just just mold it like that you know so that's the difference so when you look at it it's like so beautiful you know all this is handmade and intricate the designs are so beautiful this kundan uh, silver and uh, these are gold uh, accessories gold plated i think for your sari i think this one would be nice all right this one you can since you're wearing a long mala you can wear this 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 is also very nice you see the workmanship is very beautiful mm. and we always have this god pictures there and uh, if you have the god pictures they, these are called temple designs mm. 
I work together with Bollywood artists like uh, Shahrukh Khan, Dave. Denzel and some lady artists, Bollywood artists, they like to have full makeup. They love beauty, even though for men as well. Full makeup means they will use blusher, lipstick, shading, eyebrow, and it's totally complete like a lady's makeup. For traditional sari, uh, about their hair and makeup and uh, accessories. What is the difference compared to modern? Is uh, the traditional type they love to wear a lot of um, accessories on hair, and then um, they like to have uh, like a charcoal eyeliner, very thick eyeliner, uh, and then emphasize top liner and bottom liner. And even though some of them they like uh, to draw eyeliner like a wing very wing flying out you know and the eyebrow as well and it's a very thick eyebrow dark color that is uh, from that time they, they consider that is beauty yeah today for modern sari and uh, I mean people now who love to wear sari everything is go natural makeup also natural even though like hairstyle is also can be loose or they like to bun, low bun, very modern, classy bun. And most of it uh, will use a lot of accessories to emphasize like earring, necklace, bangle, to emphasize it, to beautify it. Let's say for modern uh, sari, uh, especially hair, people like to bun or plait and then using the flower. So those flowers actually you can get it from those uh, Indian store. Um, they, they, they sell a lot and all handmade. So it's a uh, to that that particular flowers is actually to enhance the beauty and at the same time give you a very um, perfume smell, very good feeling. Uh, I'm Dr. Jason He, as the founder of Slang of Fashion Week, and we have all these uh, fashion activity and uh, beside modern, and we have culture. Fashion is not only modern; we also have culture, like kebaya, like chiong sam or chi uh, pao. And one of the activity that we also include inside the Fashion Week is sari. As we know that a Fashion Week. Uh, either uh, Malaysia Fashion Week or Ipo Fashion Week or like what we did now is Selangor Fashion Week. For Fashion Week, most of the people uh, have the objective to promote the designer outfit, uh, whether it's modern or it's a culture, and also the benefit to the retailer and uh, the buyer and promote our Malaysia products to OC. But especially uh, during this fashion week, we also highlighted sari and one of the important elements inside uh, because of uh, our culture. We have Malay, we have Chinese, we have Indian and Indian also are contributing uh, that part of the activity. So I uh, will conclude that through this length of fashion week, the unity will come the main objective. The traditional costume is not only about fashions, but is also representing the social status and the culture of the nations and its race. Our next traditional fashions documentary will share the insight of Qi Pao and Kebaya. Thank you for your watching. 
please comment, like and share the clip with your friends and family members. Hope to see you again.